Hello everybody, welcome back to uh, Feed the Beast on the Staple. Um, still here in my little cave here, as you can kind of see. Um, it occurred to me yesterday that I did not really go through all the Tinker's Construct stuff with uh, my YouTube audience. So, what I'm going to get started with today is first of all explaining that real quick, um, as well as the different modifiers that we know. And then, as soon as the rain lets up here and I can travel outside, um, we're going to get started looking for some clay, and we'll need to find a smelter. So first of all, what are these? Um, for those of you who have played Tinker Construct, these will be pretty familiar. Um, the main difference right now um, is... Well, they're basically a few mi menus, but first let's get started with how to make them. Um, it's pretty basic. Um, just what you want to do is you want to take a, a couple pieces of wood, um, and you'll use those to make what we call a point pattern. You get four of them per crafting, which is basically two sticks and two planks of any type. And you can use them um, on top of different items to get different things. Uh, for example, well, it's easier to show you here. Um, they do have different leg patterns uh, depending on what material you use, so keep that in mind. But uh, the stencil tables are basically using a plank pattern on top of a plank. Um, the pattern chest is a pattern on top of a chest or surrounded by planks, either one works. It comes out to be the same thing, really. <clears throat> then you got the part builder, which is just a pattern on top of a plank log. Now they did come out with a new one called the part chest, which I haven't shown off yet. We might get to that later. Um, depends on how many parts we make. But, once you get Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot one. You also need to know the tool station, which um, is a crafting table with a bike pattern. Now, the tool station is the only one that has a direct upgrade, which is the tool forge. And there's different versions of that one, too, depending on what blocks of metal you use. But it's basically your old tool station, four blocks of whatever metal your choice. They all have to be the same type and then four blocks of some seared stone, bricks, whatever, um, which you get when you're trying to make the smelter. Um, you can... I'll show you that recipe now because that's kind of what we're going for, um, but we want to try to get the seared bricks, and there's two ways of doing that. The first one we're going to need to do is to make grout. Uh, and we'll end up baking that, but grout is basically four sand, four gravel, and one clay block. Or alternatively, one clay, one sand, one gravel. Again, it comes out to be about the same thing, because one makes four, one makes eight. Actually, we can work it out to mass the same. I just prefer this recipe because it's a little bit easier. And this is shapeless, so you could have these arranged in any way, shape, or form you wish. Um, now there is another option. Um, let's see here. The other option is once you already have a smeltery set up, you can use that to melt stone, and you can use that to form bricks. Or uh, later on, if you have the right one, you can make entire blocks out of it. Mister Zombie is still down there from last time. That's good to see. Now once you have them. Keep in mind, I have one, the chest hidden back there. That does need to be level. Right now, it does not work underneath. But once you have one, we can start off with the stencil table and put in the blank patterns. And you can come over here and click them and pull them straight out. And they tell you what they are, patterns for a pan, and it says that I need three or whatever material it is to make that. The pickaxe, on the other hand, only needs two. So I'll get the ones I don't already have. Oh, quick tip. 
if for some reason you're getting over hasty like I sometimes do and hit shift while doing that you will make all three of the same pattern however you put them back in there you can rechange them so um, I think I got the plate I don't think I had the excavator yet and I don't think I have the broadhead yet now like I said you can rechange these if you wanted to so you could in theory just reuse the same ones if you want for ease of use I just put them here inside my pattern chest which like I said is that block behind there when it's next to this one you can still open it just by opening up the the chest area oh apparently I already have that one in there so it's not going to let me put it back in so like I said before we'll just uh, recycle that I know I don't have the sign yet. now um, with the part builder itself we are slightly limited because we need the actually let me get rid of that real quick we need um, materials that the part builder can use and that's basically any non-metal if it is a metal then the part builder cannot use it however if I put my wood there it can use it now if you are familiar with thong or Tinker's Contract excuse me and you have not seen my previous video I kinda go over this or correction you did not see my previous stream I kinda go over this um, and it will show you what sort of stats the item has for example with the wooden one it has the uh, trait e ecological which is a renewable resource making it cheap but it causes you to have a splinter every now and then and if you just watch me as I'm using my pick or whatever you'll see where I'm picking away at something and I will suddenly flinch backwards like I was just hit that's the splinter effect um, now as far as I see the splinter does not actually do any damage so far uh, that could change remember all these are still per pretty early it does also give you different things over here um, depends on what your material is those of you who are veterans of thumbcraft will understand most of these um, but uh, something you might want to keep an eye on is the durability the mining level and the handle those are the most important ones for me uh, and then you also got the uh, mining speed and the attack those kind of depend on what you need um, Mining speed isn't really important for anything other than pickaxes and hammers, in my opinion. And the, and the attack's not really important for anything that's not a weapon. So your shovel, you don't need to worry about the, the attack speed. They do have a new one here called quality, um, which I did not go over last time. But as far as I can tell, um, if I make this this pickaxe out of, uh, or the, sorry, this tool binding, that's considered a secondary part and I think it gets like 50% of its stats added on to the stats of the main part for example the pickaxe head uh, but uh, we'll, it's still a little up in the air um, now this one here is the bone tool rod uh, the tool rod is kind of the stick of your pickaxe or the handle of your sword um, and except for like two or three items this is what you're going to be making uh, the stone tool rod though has a unique ability called splintering uh, basically it does more damage every time you hit them so if I hit them once it does two damage if I hit them twice it does three damage on the second swing hit them a fourth time it does you know buy damage on, on the third swing this is of course just throwing numbers out there so don't take my word for it but overall it is a not only is the splintering a good one for a weapon, it does have a good handle and it does have a decent attack for whatever that will count for so I think I'm going to save that for use of my sword but you're going to need to keep an eye on each and every new material now because they each have different things there um, I, if I use my 
ingest enough items. I can show you, um, let's see, tool. And I can show you that the, all the different materials there. I'm kind of going slowly here. But um, you can see all their unique abilities and the different color words underneath the actual name. What those words are, unfortunately, we can't see in the screen. So it is something where you will kind of have to play with them to see what they do. Um, some of them make a certain amount of sense for like the prismine rods, aqua dynamic. I'm guessing means that it actually works faster underwater. I haven't tested that yet, but that's my guess. Um, the stone tool rods. I, stone is a material that in the old Thumbcraft, or why do I keep on saying Thumbcraft? The old Thinker's Construct I would never use because there was kind of a glitch slash feature, whatever you want to call it, that you could exploit. But for the most part, it basically got mined faster the lower durability you got. Not my thing. Um, here though, it has the ability cheap, which means that one, it's when it's part of your item, for example, actually I can show you this one. When it's part of your item, so for example, the head of this pickaxe here, cheap increases the durability gain when you repair these tools. That is the major advantage over uh, vanilla tools, by the way, is Thinker's Construct tools don't actually break. They become very, they lower into durability to the point where they are basically useless. But if I had a little bit of cobblestone, which actually might not be a bad idea to demonstrate right now, I can just take it back to one of my stations. Keep in mind I have a, sec a spare one in my inventory for just this reason. And then I can give a little bit of cobblestone and repair it. And with the cheap bonus, it gets a little bit extra for whatever material is there. Now I believe I have the wooden handle here and the uh, stone tool binding. Um, actually, sorry, let me redo that. There we go. See how it's made out of three parts? I have wood, I have stone, and I have stone. One of the things that I like about the new Tinker's Construct is they borrowed the uh, idea from Iguana Tweaks and you can now change out different parts. So uh, later on I will be able to change out the head of my uh, pickaxe and make it iron. Then it will be uh, wood, stone, and iron. And iron is the same for every part so it doesn't really matter. Um, what part it is except for you know the other stats but um, let's see your iron there it is has magnetic which I have tested and I can tell you that means whenever you hit something you have a small pull to you and items that are loosely floating on the ground will be drawn toward you kinda useful for mining um, for actual combat I don't know about that but um, there are other ones for it too Let's see here. Now these here are the tough tool rods. Those are only used for a couple of items. So they're not really that much different than the other items except for they cost more. They're still effective with a handle. But, um, let's see here. It's now nighttime. So let me go to sleep here real quick. Because there's no spiders nearby unfortunately. And YouTube will get. I'm going to go look around for some clay, and I'll be back with you once I found some. Oh, for, okay, so for anybody who's seen my stream, I apologize for the extra stuff, but I forgot to put that in the YouTube video. Sorry. Always gotta be in my way. I hate creepers. 
Anybody familiar with Direwolf? I know that he hates Endermans. No, I really, really hate Creepers. So. Okay, you two, welcome back. As you can see, I didn't exactly travel very far because that's my cave right there. But I found a little bit of clay down here. And as per usual, the Tinker Shovel works just like any other shovel and does help clear this out. Something I did forget to mention to you guys is as of right now, keep in mind that I don't have the most updated version of Unstable yet, but as of right now, the, uh, the matchlock, which acts like kind of a axe and uh, an axe, a shovel, and a hoe, there, yeah. that was a tongue twister, an axe, a shovel, and a hoe in the old Tinker's Construct does not have that functionality right now. Right now, all it does is act like a um, a hoe. So I'm going to keep at it. I want to get, well, preferably a couple of stacks of clay. So I'll grab a couple things um, and be back with you guys shortly. Okay, YouTube, back home, and as you can tell, it's starting to get dark out, so I kind of had to run. But I only got about a little over a stack of sand, which is not as much as I might have liked, but it'll do for our purposes. One of the reasons I brought you back, though, is because I want to show you my shovel here. See, durability zero. This is effectively broken right now, so I could still use it to break sand, dirt, whatever, but... It's, well, I guess it still works on dirt, but on sand and gravel, it's not going to be much better than using my fist. So, again, using cobblestone, I can repair it. There we go. And once more, you can. You may have to rewind a bit, but if you take a look at the shovel head, the top portion of it is pointy, which means it's ready to go again. So, now that I got everybody here, let's take a look at route. Grout is, like I showed you earlier, is pretty simple. Um, again, I like to make blocks of cubes um, because it just faster as far as crafting goes, in my opinion. And if they haven't changed it, the recipe is actually shapeless. Yep, still shapeless. So that's a quite a bit of grub. But we are going to want more. First though, we're going to want to get these started. Minecraft tip for you all. If you one piece of coal will uh, smelt eight items. That's eight pieces of grub, eight pieces of wood, eight pieces of iron, doesn't matter. It's just eight pieces. Which reminds me, I need to get a bit of iron because I need to make that bucket for the lava. But, um, like I said, um, one block of charcoal, eight items. Nine, block of, nine blocks of charcoal, is 72 items. 9 times 8 is 72. Or you can use 9 charcoal to make one block of coal. Sorry, you can use 9 coal to make one block of coal. I'm not sure if they have the block of charcoal in here. Some mods do, some don't. Okay. But the block of coal actually has, um, actually will smelt 8 items. That's Work that's effectively getting a whole piece of coal for, for free. Um, the only downside to this is it does see 116. And if we go over to the same thing here, 16. So uh, that's 10 times versus, yeah. So effectively, you get um, a little bit extra for free. Now, I will point out. That's just like normal. If you have too few items in the smoke uh, in the furnace, it will burn off the extra coal that you didn't use. 
Um, so you're going to want to use this recipe and check back in on it, or you're going to want to have your furnace on a hopper, which is something we're going to try to do later. Looks like we got a skeleton down there. I don't think he can shoot us in here, but we'll find out real short like I imagine. So let's draw some stuff in here, including the cinder pearls and maybe some extra clay. Like I said, we'll probably get back to using that. Um, the smelt, I made a mistake earlier thinking that Thumbcraft was the only way for us to ore double. That's not true. The smeltery also ore doubles, actually better than Thumbcraft does. So, well, I suppose if you really work it, um, you know, purifying your iron on or putting it inside of a arcane or an infernal furnace with some bellows, you might be able to get a couple nuggets more than the smeltery. But the smeltery is by far the easier and faster process. Um, I suppose I should probably explain that a bit more. That will go into Thongcraft knowledge we don't have yet. But uh, in Thongcraft you can take an iron ore and you can throw it into an infernal furnace if you want and get one bar back plus chance of nuggets. Um, or the other option is, like I said, you just smelt it and that's one bar is 144 megabuckets. So that's two bars there. Or you can purify it and get a native iron cru uh, crucible. That requires you to have a crucible and a couple of aspects in there, which uh, Dire Wolf has shown a very easy way of getting this, and I might show you that later. But for now, we'll worry about that later. The native iron cluster, though, um, if you put it inside the infernal smeltery, you get one or two bars and zero to three nuggets, plus some experience. Um, you get the ex I'm afraid you don't get the experience from the uh, smeltery, but and I'm not a big thing of enchanting, so that's not a big deal for me. Um, the other option is you can just smelt one in front of nugget and get two bars. So one iron ore, two bars. Um, now, the infernal furnace is kind of a multi-block structure that you will have to see in order to really understand. But in Thumbcraft, we can also make billows. If I can spell that right. Which apparently I can't. Um, or, oh, that's right, they're called arcane billows. That's right. Arcane billows are little pumps. And you can kind of see them there moving up and down. And they speed up the process of whatever item you're doing. And in the arcane, or in the infernal furnace, you can attach three of them. You can not only speed up the process, but you can make it run cleaner so you don't pollute your environment as much with uh, flux. And you can get it to produce extra nuggets. So, like I said, if you purify things, put it inside Infernal Smelter with the, um, with the bellows, you might be able to get mm, two and a half, three bars per ore. Whether or not you want to do that, that's entirely up to you. Now remember with that charcoal recipe, you still want to keep getting that out. So, um, there is a spider over there, and I want to kill it. Fortunately, day is coming, so the spider, or the skeleton zombie areas should be cleaned up. Where? There he is. But, um, let me take care of a couple of spiders here. And uh, then I will uh, be back at the base and be with you in a moment, YouTube. Okay, YouTube, welcome back. Uh, home sweet home. Did a little bit of lying. I got a little bit more than I said we would. Um, first of all, I still have the grouch cooking. At least I hope it's still cooking. Yep. Um, I went over there and grabbed the bucket of lava, since I had that available. 
And um, since we were talking about numbers earlier, one block of coal is eight items. One block of coal, sorry, one coal, eight items. One block of coal, 80 items. One bucket of lava. Yes, that works inside of a furnace. Put the bucket and everything in there. And it will give you the bucket right back. But it will give you uh, 100 items. Keep in mind that it only goes up to 60, it only stacks up to 64 in the output. So unless you have a hopper or you actively pull it out like I'm doing now, that's not going to work very well. You're going to have a lot of wasted output. But it is an option in some cases. Um, but yeah, I also got some uh, leather, and that's so we can get started with uh, Thongcraft here shortly. Uh, I don't need, I only need three, and I'm going to need nine sugar cane. We're going to take the sugar cane, turn them all into paper, and with the leather we're going to make three books. With one log. By the way, in case you didn't know, the mouse wheel does move things out of the inventories. Uh, so, useful tip. Okay, so. There we go, that's a bookcase. That's going to be the start of how we get into Thumbcraft. For now, I'm just going to leave it there. Keep in mind that if you punch and break that, it's going to drop the books, but it's not going to drop the wood. Frankly, not the end of the world. Okay, so let's show you what we're going to do with the ground. What you're going to want to look up is Tinker's Construct. Remember to use the at sign to show the mods. And we're going to be looking at the seared. So we can actually narrow this down a bit. Just search for here. Okay, this is the liquid stone I told you about earlier, the cobblestone you can use. Um, and these are the bricks we have for smelting grout. So what we're going to do is, first of all, we're going to want the seared, or the smeltery controller, which, I'm sorry, is not here. Okay, so we've got two things that aren't, don't have seared in the name. No biggie. Um, we're going to want the smelter controller, which is just eight in a circle. This is kind of your control interface for the smeltery. And we're going to want the smeltery drain, which I can tell you from experience is just six like that. We're going to want at least one nozzle, or faucet, I guess it's called. And then we'll go back to the seared stuff. And we're going to want at least one smeltery tank, and you can go with gauges or windows. Um, I prefer the windows because it's less glass, which I'm going to need to cook up some glass, so we'll get to that in a moment. Um, let's get the... I'm going to need glass for that too. Okay, so that's 8 and 6, so let's take 14 and set it aside for a moment. And the other things we're going to need is we're going to need a whole bunch of smelted bricks. Or smelted bricks, sorry. Okay, so... Now to get started with the smelter. Let's see here. Um, did not make this cave really meant for expanding very much, so we'll just kind of punch a hole in here for now. And the smelter is a, uh, or correction, the smelter E is a multi-block structure, meaning that it needs well, multiple blocks to form. Um, I prefer to make it at least 3x3, three three, and I'll show you why. Remember what I said about the splinters? That was me just getting hit there a second ago. Now, I'm going to dig out the bottom here. And I'm going to start placing uh, seared bricks. Actually, correction, I'm going to also knock out a row here, a row here, and a row here. Whoops. There we 
go. And I'll show you the rest once we get more bricks here. Put the tank there. And maybe that wasn't the best placement in the world, but knock this out. And I'm going to put the drain here with the faucet. And you'll see why that is in a little bit. Looks like my block of charcoal finally finished. So 48 divided by 8, that's 6 more blocks of coal. Or 6 more things of coal, sorry. What are those called? Chunks of coal, I guess? No, they're not pellets, so yeah, chunks, I guess. Yeah, no. Oh. And I should have made the glass so I could have got started on that, but oh well. And I used up the seared stone I did not want to use. Go me! Okay, so we're almost finished here. Let's take a little bit more time, you two, for some of this to smelt up, and I'll be back in a moment when it's ready. Okay, welcome back, you two. As you can kind of see here, I had this set up to give me the seared tank already. You need eight seared stone around some glass. The seared tank is probably going to be pretty important in this pack. Like I said, we don't have a way of traveling or carrying lava back and forth, so we will be using that. The other thing I'm going to do is three glass and six uh, seared bricks. That gives me a seared window. And the final thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a, another faucet and I miscounted and I'm going to make uh, a actually I'm going to make the casting table first I really miscounted wow okay um, what that's going to do is that's going to allow us to pour out our uh, items here but as you can see I kind of finished this up and I moved it all over to the side because I realized what I had wasn't exactly efficient. Um, not a big deal, but remember the faucet is kind of its own separate block, so it does need to be stuck on something. But once you break it, just like any other Minecraft block, it's not affected by gravity. It's actually kind of useful in some cases. But uh, we're going to take our seared window and put it there. Now the seared window can also hold lava, I believe, but I prefer to use the tank. And you'll see, once I finish this, this lights up. That tells us it's now fully active. And this is what we have for inputs. This is currently what is inside of it. You can tell it shows you how much we have free and what's the current capacity. Um, that's actually something new. It didn't tell us the capacity before. And then it will tell us what we have for fuel. To my knowledge, there's only two types of fuel for the smeltery, and only one of them uh, is available right now. The other one is found in a special mod uh, called Thermal Expansion, and, well, can't, correction, Thermal Foundation, I think, but we don't have that yet. Now, actually, I'm just going to put that back down, and I'm going to put the bucket of lava in there. There. Now it has fuel. One bucket. Never actually seen anything use a B before. It's always MB. Interesting. Anyways, temperature is 1300. Some mods actually increase in temperature. This one doesn't. It's just showing you um, temperature because, like I said, some mods have items that need the other fuel source in order to make uh, certain alloys. Now, in this version of the game, there is nothing besides iron and gold, really. So there's not going to be any ally or allies, which is kind of nice. We don't have to worry about that. But if you had other things like copper and tin, for example, mixed together with bronze, and you will put, uh, put copper in there, left it, then you want to put tin in there because you need tin nuggets, 
suddenly your tin mixes with your bra or your copper without you cooking on it. It just does it automatically and you're out of your tin. Kind of annoying. But there are ways to help with that. None of which we're going to be getting to though because I'm getting off topic. So we now have our smeltery, we now have our fuel, and we now have nine iron ingots. I'm going to put them in there. And you can see that my fuel is going down. I just lost 50 right out the top. And these bars are going up. What the smelter is doing is it's melting that. And I'm going to give it a moment while I grab um, actually I don't want that. I want tinkers or at tinkers I want the sharpening kit and I want the iron one Oh, I forgot, we're going to need gold. Huh. That's a bit annoying. Okay. Well, we might have to put a hold on that project then. Which is really annoying. But, what can you do? Um, as you can see, it's formed up into seared... Uh, or molten iron right now and it's just gonna stay there until I basically pour it back out <coughs> excuse me it's just gonna stay there until I pour it back out now um, actually there is another way for me to get it out I need to make some more grouch here real quick um, sand like I said, I don't like this scroll bar. It's a minor complaint, but actually I'm going to screw it. Like I said, this is the other crafting recipe. Mathematically, there's no difference, just a number of clicks. And I made that harder than it had to be. Surprise. Well, that's melting up, I want to explain something with the smelter for you. Um, I like to have mine 3x3. Three three. For those of you who did not see me put it together, that's 3 on the bottom. Then I need 3 elevated on... Oops, shouldn't have done that. I need three elevated on each side. I am way overworking this. But that's on each side. So I actually had to lay a, a sear bricks underneath that iron. If you wanted to, I believe the smallest one is actually just a one by one. So you could do something like that. Uh -huh. Yeah, something like that. That's only going to be able to melt one item at a time though. So you'd have your controller, you would have your tank, um, I guess you could have your glass if you wanted, but the other one, the other two, it's only going to feed out of one tank at a time, so the other two would probably be stone bricks. So same with the one on the bottom. But um, the drain has to be one on the same level or the lower level or the higher. Let me start again. The drain has to be on the same level or a higher level than the current height. Why do you want more than one like I had back there? Well, the short version is, is if I get this up another row, meaning I have seared bricks or smeltery, smeltery stuff all the way around, except for a smelted controller. It will not accept another smeltery controller. 
if I have sheer bricks and stuff all the way around, then I'm not able to just put nine in there. I'll be able to fit in a whole another nine to it. And you can go larger than this. I I think the largest you can go is like seven by seven or eight by eight or something like that. Um, the only the only requirement is that it does have to be you know the same numbers. So you can't have a two by three as far as I know. Um, maybe he changed that with the new version. I don't know. It wasn't in the old one. Um, but most people do not know about that one by one. They all assume it has to be three by three. Not the case. It can get much wider. But I like to have it three by three because that means you have you can put in nine items at a time. And assuming my bricks have finished cooking here, I will show you how to make the smeltery basin. Now, these two recipes are very similar. The only difference is top or bottom. This one allows you to make the different parts and to make individual ingots. This one here allows you to pour out everything and form it straight into a block of whatever that is. Um, actually, I'm going to take this out for a moment. There we go. Why is that not working? Well, that's interesting. YouTube, I'm going to have to come back to you once I figure out why that's not working. Okay, YouTube, I've tried a couple of things. I'm not entirely sure why that's not working. Sorry. Um, the way it used to be is you just had to right click on the thing and it would pop straight out. I'm not sure why it's not now. Maybe that's, maybe it doesn't recognize the basin yet, which will be a bit annoying. But. We'll have to figure that out later. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you real quick is keep in mind that's all molten in there right now. And this is actually a portable tank. So if I break it, that's all gone. I can't access the uh, controller right now, but it's all kind of stored inside the controller. So as long as I don't break the controller, I can break any part of this I want and reform it as I choose. Um, the stuff inside of it will stay the same, so it will still have 18 block or 18 bars of iron in there, and I could expand this out to a 9x9 nine nine unit, it will fill up the appropriate layers. Um, the only exception to that is if I made like a 9x9 nine nine full of metal or something like that and then shrunk it down, if there's not enough space, I think it deletes the excess. How it decides what the excess is, I don't know that for sure. Um, there is one spider here. You little Mr. Spider. I only got like one more hit on my sword. So hopefully I can get you and not Mr. Zombie. Uh, no, nope, getting Mr. Zombie. And I did get the string antibody. Fantastic. So I will tell you why I've been wanting spiders here now. Um, if you take a chest, put it in the middle with string around the four corners and wool of all the same color. It has to be the same color. You get the bag uh, from Baggins and the bag will change color depending on what wool you use. That's why it has to be the same color. But the Baggins bag is another 15 slots for the inventory right there. So I can put all this stuff in there and use it as needed, basically. So um, let me go back. Actually, let me sleep for right now. Sleep, sleep, there we go. Okay, let 
me run back over to that lava area. Trying to avoid all the creepers, and that would make a mess of this area. I really don't need that right now. And YouTubers, you didn't see that earlier, but this here is a beanstalk. You can grow beans from that, from the random mods. Um, apparently you can use that to make magic beans. Um, whereas before I thought you could only use it to make bean soup. And the, if you use it for magic beans, I think um, it, if I understand it right, it grows a stalk of random size that you can use like a ladder. But at, th at the top of it, it has a whole bunch of uh, metals for you. Gold, iron, diamonds, etc. Um, haven't actually had a chance to take a look at that yet, so we might experiment with that later. But the magic beans, I think there's two different types. Oops, helps if I can spell. Yeah, there's lesser magic beans, which is the ones you can craft, just uses gold or gold coins. And that one we can't craft. So I'm not sure how to get that, but it grows at the beanstalk, and then there's supposed to be like the ores at the top at a random level. And I think I think it, I read that it could actually go up to the build limit for the world. So that's you know y equals 256. Is it worth it to get some gold and iron? Well, it kind of depends on your pack. Um, now I believe the tank can only hold a maximum of four, um, four lava. Did it lose the inventory? Oh, if, that, if they took that out, that's going to be really bad. Because I won't have any way of transporting lava except for a whole lot of buckets. Take it back to the smelter and see if we remember it's there. No, it does not remember its inventory, so we just lost about four buckets worth of lava. Well, actually about four and a half. Good thing I grabbed an extra bucket. So, wow. Um, they did just reintroduce the smeltery, so those may be features that are coming out later. Um, that might also explain why the faucet's not working correctly. Um, I'll have to check in on that. But... Um, right now, I think the only thing we can do is go do some mining and get some gold, uh, which is what I need to continue with uh, over there. Um, so, let me repair my pack in YouTube. Let me repair my pick and YouTube. Um, we'll be back with you shortly. Uh, once we get uh, hopefully some gold. We won't be able to get some diamonds yet, but we can at least get started on some Tinker stuff. And once we get some gold, we can hopefully get started on uh, the Thongcraft stuff too, because that's really the only thing holding us back right now is the smeltery not working. Well, I suppose we could get started on Thongcraft. But ideally, I'd want that smell to be working, so I'll be back shortly. Okay, I do stand corrected. Um, there are a few things that can alloy, but very few in this pack by the looks of it. Uh, this does not appear to be one of them. Oh no, this is one. So if we have um, so much sheared stone, so much liquid purple slime, and so much iron in there, we'll get the night slime. 
Um, same thing with the Manelium. Um, we need Cobalt and Ardite, which are two ores introduced to the Nether. So we won't be getting those anytime soon, unfortunately. And Pig Iron. Um, I think those are the only ones. Yeah. Um, pig Iron is gotten from Blood, Iron, and Molten Emerald. Um, how do you get that? Well, blood can be gotten from having a uh, a putting in zombie flesh in there right now. That will give you a small amount of blood. The other way of getting blood is is whenever there is liquid metal in there, it is actually damaging to standard. Um, kind of like lava, except where you don't start on fire. So. You could have like chicken, sheep, pig, whatever, stand in there, and it will give you blood. The two exceptions to this is um, uh, molten emeralds you can get from putting a melt, uh, an emerald inside the smeltery, um, or you can put a villager inside the smeltery, and that will give you molten emeralds instead of blood. The other exception to this is horses in some mods will give you uh, well correction in the old version of the mod will give you uh, glue instead of blood and glue could be used kind of like uh, slime balls so kind of a little cruel but that's the way it works in real life unfortunately so let's grab one more of these I guess Oops, forgot something. That was the wrong one. It occurs to me that just melted the gold, but I still have my lava bucket here. So I wonder what is using for fuel right now. Still says there's lava in there, so there must be a glitch somewhere. Huh. Might have to do a bug report on that. Okay. Now that we got the iron bar, and you can use any sort of bar, including clay bars if you wanted to, or clay bricks. Um, Take that over to the casting table, and we're going to switch this to gold. Whichever one's on the bottom is going to pour out first. That's still not working. Hmm. Sorry, guys. Give me just a second here to figure out what's going on here, and I'll be right back. Well guys, I'm sorry, but there doesn't seem to be anything about it yet. Um, so it looks like all that gold is kind of wasted right now. And let me check one thing real quick. It may be possible to that the uh, before this version, the why am I still clicking on that table? Before this version, they had uh, Tinker's Tools, even the metallic ones, using the table. Let's still see if that's in effect right now. Um, if so, we can just bypass the smelter, and it just becomes a pretty decoration until that get that upgrade. Well, it does tell us all the stats, but it won't give us it. Huh. Well, we have a rechargeable stone pick, and I guess we'll have to make iron tools then. That's a bummer. We'll have to see if the next Unleash update fixes anything. 
but I suppose that means there's no reason not to get into uh, no, Thonecraft now.